Hi guys, and welcome to the final episode of our broiler project. We're really excited and we've actually already get, gotten started uh, butchering, but I wanted to um, give you a little heads up. It's pretty graphic and a little bit messy. So if you have a queasy stomach, it may not be the best video to watch, um, but I'm really excited to teach you the best way to butcher your chickens if you can't find a processor and we'll go in there and get started. Thanks for watching. There's a few different items you can use for killing cones, apparently. They're not always that easy to find online. <laughs> um, we used a, a road cone that we cut to make it easier. So the purpose of a killing cone is to hold the chicken's body upside down. You pull the head through the bottom, um, and that's so that you can get at uh, their arteries the best. That's the most humane way uh, to kill them. Um, and it, it makes it so that they can bleed out and the meat is better when they bleed out properly. So it holds their bodies so they're not flopping everywhere. It makes it so you can humanely kill them um, in the easiest way and then they bleed out. Once they finish bleeding out, you will want to scald them. The scalding process is important because their feathers are hard to remove. Um, and especially if you're plucking by hand, you will want to make sure that their feathers have that you've dunked the whole bird and swished them around and gotten their feathers nice and loosened up. It's much, much easier to pull their feathers off once they've been rinsed in hot water. It's about 145 degrees um, is ideal, so you're not cooking the meat, um, but it's warm enough yet to get the feathers nice and loose for you. So we have um, an industrial plucker. We're doing things the easy way today. But there are a lot of plucking machines available out there. There are tabletop ones, there are um, pluckers that are operated with a hand drill, and basically the concept is all the same. You're spinning the bird and there are rubber fingers that grab the loosened up feathers and pull them off. There's still a little bit of manual plucking that you will need to do. Um, pin feathers tend to stick on a little bit harder um, or that the plucker can't grab. You, you just grab hold of them with your fingernails or you can even use um, the blunt edge of a knife to help pick them off or tweezers would, would work as well. Uh, just so that you end up with a nice clean looking bird by the time you're ready to start cutting. So after you have scalded and plucked them and you've got a nice clean featherless bird, you will want to rinse them in cold water. A lot of people miss this part, um, but it's, it's better for the meat to cool them off right away after you've scalded them and plucked them. Um, it, it's, it just makes it a lot better and keeps the, the chicken much nicer looking and tasty. So there is a rhythm to this and a, um, a series of cutting them that makes everything easier um, where to cut them and, and why. So if it's still at its head, that's what I would cut off first. They did that for me already. Then right in here is where there is a feed crop. That is where their food is stored before it goes down their esophagus, down into the gizzard um, at, for digestion. So, and that needs to come out. You don't want that in the chicken. And you have to be careful because if it breaks open, then it can kind of get underneath the skin in here and just make it a little harder to clean up and make, you know, nice for preparing to eat. So you just do a little slit at the top. Something that can make this much easier to manage to get out because it can be a little tricky to get out, which I'll show you in a second, is if you take away their feed a good 12 hours before you're gonna process them, that this will, it won't be so full of feed. So it'll be easier to get out without making a mess, without breaking it open. Then we're gonna spin it around. And in order to cut the feed off, the easiest way is you've got two knuckles here and you go right in between them. And again, you wanna have a good sharp knife and you just kinda of slide in between. Ooh, this is a very good sharp knife. <laughs> so be careful, um, but just right in between the knuckles is the best spot, the easiest spot to get their legs off. So, got that part done. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is cut the belly open to get the guts out. And again, you have to be careful with this because the intestines are right in here. And if you happen to cut them open, Feces will come out, again, hard to clean up. 
not as nice. Uh, so you want to be a little careful. You don't want to go too deep, but deep enough to get through the muscle tissue. So I usually start way over here, and I get just maybe a quarter inch in, um, and I just kind of slide around until I've got a nice wide opening that I'll be able to get my hands in. And you can see some of the, you know, their innards right there. One more cut uh, before we start pulling the guts out. Uh, we want to get rid of its hind end or butt. So you just kind of cut underneath it and around it without nicking your finger. And then you can pull this part out and lob the rest of it off. Oop, and see, I got the intestine that time. You'll see what happens. Not that pretty, but washable and manageable. So then what we do is, oh, I got a pin feather. What I usually start with is scooping my hand underneath this, which is the gizzard. A lot of people like to eat these. Um, if you don't, then you can just pitch it. Um, but there's a way to process the gizzard as well if you do like to eat them. And it's connected by, I don't know, probably on an intestine, which would make sense. And you just kind of have to pull the pieces off. And if it's too hard to rip off, you can use your knife and just kind of make a little cut. Finish separating it, and there you've got a gizzard. If you do like to eat the gizzards, you have, to, you have to open it up and get the liner out of it. You don't eat that part, and the easiest way to do that is on the purple side, you'll see there's like blue, and it's just kind of the top of the gizzard, is you just make a little slit until you get to the middle of it. So again, this is a gizzard. Chickens don't have stomachs. Uh, this is how they process their food. And you'll see it's just kind of full of partially digested food, but there is a skin to it. That's not always the easiest to get off. But once you get it started, you'll see that it just kind of peels off. Get all of it off. Oop, stubborn little last piece. And then you'll see you have a nice clean gizzard. You want to rinse that too in nice cold water, nice clean fresh water. And then you have a finished gizzard that would be ready for cooking. Not my thing, but if it's yours, that's how you would do it. <laughs> so what we need to do next then is kind of get the whole mass of their innards out. We gotta get their heart out, their liver out, and their intestines out. And I like to do it in one pull so that, um, you know, the intestines try, try to keep the intestines intact so again, it doesn't make such a big mess. So what I do is right in between these two fingers, I feel for the heart, which has like a little bit of a point to it. And it's hard to see when it's still in there. And then you just kind of scoop and pull. So you got a handful of innards and a basically empty chicken once you've gotten this out. So this is the, gonna be the heart, this is the liver, uh, and obviously the intestines, and then there is this part. Uh, this is their gallbladder. Growing up, I used to call it the greenie. And you need to separate this from the liver if you're wanting to keep the liver and the heart. This is not something that you would eat. But it can be a little tricky because if you break the gallbladder, it is filled with a very bright green liquid. And while it, it's not gonna hurt anything, it just doesn't look that great. It can stain the chicken itself, making it look like it's uh, not good meat. So you have to very carefully pinch at the very, very top of the liver and separate it, hopefully without breaking it. And then this is all junk. And again, rinse in cold water. It's nice and clean, fresh, ready to go. So then, this is, this is the part where we do the trick to make the esophagus and um, trachea easier to remove. So I take my middle finger and I go all the way to the back and I feel for the trachea and then I go ahead and snap it. Then, this part of their intestinal tract, which I don't really know the name of, it's, if you look, it's like this little kind of fatty tissue looking thing. You wanna pull on that just a little bit, but not all the way, you don't want it to break off. That will make the trachea and esophagus hard to get out again. So you pull on it just till you feel it give a little bit. 
Then we go ahead and try to get the crap off, out. So you feel for the sack, go ahead and remove that from the skin. And hopefully, if I did everything right, this all comes out nicely and get everything out. I did miss the trachea that time, so you gotta find that again and get that out as well. Then, now that you've gotten all the innards out, then you wanna take your scraper, get to the very top of the lung there, and try to pull it all out in one piece is the easiest. And you got the lung out. If you didn't have a scraper, you can also use your hand. You just kinda dig along the side into the rib and you can pop it out with your hand. Then there's the kidneys right there and testes that need to come out. That's a little harder to get out with your hand, um, but still possible. I like using the lung remover scraper. Until you've got all of the yucky out. Oh, looks pretty good. And then we rinse. Another thing with the rinsing, um, if you feel that the water is starting to get warm, because it will, with warm bodies in it, um, you want to add cold water or change it out altogether. You don't want the bird to get warm. You want it to get nice and cool before you package it. It just makes the meat much fresher and better tasting. So we're going to just keep trucking along here. Before you begin butchering, uh, make sure to take precaution. Uh, be aware of the risk of salmonella, which is carried in the intestinal tract in, in feces of chickens. Since you're going to be working very closely with all that, um, make sure that you either wear gloves or just don't touch your, your face, don't eat or drink in the area that you're processing uh, to prevent yourself from getting sick if, if the bird were to pass salmonella on to you. Uh, just keep regular, you know, normal hygiene in mind. Um, you want to make sure you've sterilized your equipment before using, which we did. We, we kind of got started because it's been a long time since we've butchered and we weren't sure how long uh, butchering 50 was going to take us. Um, but just keep that in mind. Everything that you're doing is going to be, um, is, is for the food that you're going to eat. So you want to make sure everything's nice and clean and that you're nice and clean and keep yourself healthy by keeping your equipment and your birds clean and rinsed. Um, and speaking of the purpose of all of this being to eat, I refuse to eat a chicken from a grocery store anymore. Once you have tried um, fresh chicken, especially ones that you've raised yourself, it's, it's really hard to go back. There's no chicken that tastes as good as that. Um, and it's really rewarding knowing where your food came from. So. Just keep keeping all that in mind. I'm, I'm really excited for you guys. I hope this has been helpful. We're gonna keep going and I will get back with you once we're finished. birds were pretty much done ready to clean up uh, we weighed a few of our birds and they're about seven to eight pounds just what we were uh, hoping for so we did pretty good um, thanks for joining us it was it was kind of fun for me it's been a long time since I've butchered chickens make sure to like and subscribe we are not done with videos yet we've got lots of things we want to show you around our hatchery and our crop farm and our breeder flocks so make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out and thanks again